Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, Sabine, did you have a chance to remember? Looked like you did. Yeah, I did. Tell me something. Um, yeah, it was during, uh, I was preparing like a coffee and then <laughs> all of a sudden I was like, oh, what was it again? Gravity, I'm touching the ground and there's my breath. Oh yeah, I'm breathing. Yeah, okay. So it took <laughs> me back. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was really nice. And it was nice afterwards, remembering? Yes, it's because it's sort of, I don't know how to explain it, but you're, you're, you're sort of empty, so everything is yeah. okay. Yeah, exactly. Very <laughs> good. Very good insight. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful what you said, because you're sort of empty and everything is okay. That's exactly it. <laughs> because when we are present, we notice that um, in a way there's not much going on in terms of what we're used to which is a lot of thinking, a lot of problems, a lot of planning, or a lot of remembering, right? All the activities that is part of the thinking mind. When the thinking mind stops, and one way to stop is because we become present, obviously, uh, either through just remembering, oh, I'm here, or uh, yeah, let me, am I breathing still? No, or gravity. Yeah, let me feel the weight. Let me feel my feet on the ground. Let me feel the weight on my body. Whatever anchor we're going to use for that. We create a pause in the mind, right? And in that pause, there are no problems. We're kind of empty. That's true. Because suddenly to what we're used to, which is a lot of, um, a little turmoil and a lot of ripples on the water, you know. Mm -hmm. Suddenly the ripples are like, they smooth out. The surface of the lake becomes like a mirror. Suddenly it's like, shh, quiet. You know, all the ripples that were created by the thinking process are gone. And then there is this kind of uh, emptiness feeling, this peace. And we realize a lot of the psychological suffering, I'm not talking about physical suffering, I'm talking about psychological suffering or the angst that comes from the overthinking, over planning, it's gone. Yeah. So a lot of the angst and the pain that we experience on a psychological level or discomfort it's not there when we become present. So it's an amazing medicine, isn't it? And it does feel empty. Indeed, it's much more empty than usual, suddenly. But what a relief. <laughs> suddenly it's like, ah, oh yeah, I like this space. Let me, let me. Let me rest in this a little longer. It feels good. Exactly that. So mindfulness meditation is about finding this time to pause over and over every time we remember. And uh, finding a way to uh, notice when am I acting out of, um, let's call it my true self, and when am I acting out of my, my egoic self? So part of the meditation process in every day's life, not only when we sit with closed eyes, guys, that's not only, that's one part of meditation but let's talk about the everyday's life meditation, is noticing when we are doing something or thinking something 
that is coming from our egoic mind versus a centered space in our true self. And that will help us to start the process of de-automatize our life. Because the more conscious we become, the less automatic our behavior becomes. You know, if we are completely unconscious, we are just uh, acting according to certain patterns and it's very, very predictable. It's automatic. The more conscious we become, the more we go like, okay, wait a second. Do I really want to do this? Is this really needed? Why am I doing this in this moment? Why am I thinking this in this moment? Why am I feeling this in this moment? Yeah, you start bringing attention to this, yeah, body mind, how it's moving, how it's thinking, wh what is it doing and why is it doing it? Yeah, that's mindfulness. So you have to slowly, slowly you remove that automatic uh, impulse to act according to certain patterns that are part of the uh, hard drive of the ego. And you become more a spontaneous being. You, you start living a more of a spontaneous conscious life. Yeah, step by step that is done. Yeah, it, it doesn't usually happen like that. It takes some work because the, the trance induced by the ego is deep, you know. You know, if you have uh, 20, 30, 50, 60 years, that means you lived, you know, a lot of your life according to certain, certain beliefs, certain preconceived ideas, whatever the ego is formed in that way. So you, you start behaving and perceiving things according to that. Not only, but a big chunk of it. Yeah. Of course, there is still your heart is still in the right place. You still feel that's beautiful. That usually is not part of the egoic mind. But a big chunk of our energy is taken by the egoic mind, right? So becoming more and more mindful means removing that any automatic reaction and starts coming from a real place. Yesterday, somebody was sharing um, how, for example, she noticed she was multitasking, you know? And we are often very proud. It's like, wow, look how many things I can do at the same time. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, but how present are you in what you're doing, really? Okay, you can succeed in doing them, but that, but then what? What's the point? You know, we were saying how the mind thinks the more the better, no? Oh, the more things I do, the more productive I am, the better it is. Yeah, okay, but is does this bring any real satisfaction to your true being or is it just an ego thing that the ego feels how proud because oh look how much i can do at the same time okay but is this nourishing is this nourishing your heart is this nourishing yourself truly or is it just nourishing your egoic mind that says ha 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 look how many things i can do more 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 you know, and before you know it, you're burned out <laughs> and you're not so proud anymore, right? You're stressed. What's the point? So again, to be able to see that in that moment, oh yeah, actually, I don't need to read a book while I'm eating. Let me just enjoy this meal, you know, or, or anything, you know, and seeing where does this idea come from that if I do more is better, the more things I do, the better it is. Where does it come from? So observing, you know, deep inside of ourselves, that's mindfulness. Then you might say, oh yeah, well, it's an idea actually. It doesn't make me feel really nourished if I do more things at the same time. Aha, uh -huh, good. And then you can go deeper. It's like an onion. You start peeling the layers. Then you go a little deeper. 
I said, like, well, why, why do you feel, why do you think it's good to multitask? Well, because then I'm more productive. Okay. And then another layer. And then what? Well, then I'm really appreciated at work because I produce more, you know, I'm more creative and they, you know, they really like it and everybody, I get appreciation from other people. Mm, good. Okay. I keep going. And then what? Well, then I feel loved and accepted. Uh -huh, good. Okay. And then what else? What if you don't feel accepted? And then you might go back and back to the point that, well, you know, when I was a child, I realized that and we all have this because when we are born, the human baby is one of the most dependent baby in nature, as I was saying, because we're completely dependent, we're vulnerable and dependent for years, you know, unlike a horse that after 15 minutes is standing on his legs. So our dependence on the outer world, on our parents and our family, for example, it creates a strong, well, yeah, dependence. And so we automatically seek approval and acceptance and love because our very life depends on that you know if if they don't like us and they neglect us and they don't feed us we die for example you know just on the physical practical level and then of course if we are not loved and love is food for the soul so if we're not loved we don't feel good we cannot grow so we seek to do the things that they tell us this is good. And if you do this, we're going to love you. Oh, what a good girl, you know? Yes, do that. You're a good girl. Or don't do this, bad girl. That's not good. Okay. Then you put it in the ego folder. Don't do this. This is bad. This is good girl. This is bad girl. And so you start behaving as a good girl, right? Now I'm making it very simple for you, yeah? but it's pretty much like that. So, you know, 30 years later, you go like, okay, but am I behaving because I'm following the information in this good girl folder or am I behaving because I really feel this way? You know, is it an automatic behavior that is dictated in a way or suggested by my ego, by the information I received? And it got so ingrained into me that I believe that's me or not. Yeah. So that's peeling the layers of the onions. When you peel it all, the thing is going to dissolve. You know, whatever is not real is going to dissolve. Yeah. To the light of awareness, only the truth will survive. Anything that is not true will dissolve. That's the beauty of mindfulness. That's really great. It's a great thing. But it is, it requires attention. It requires presence. It requires a little work in a way. Yeah. And remembering, the more you can remember, the better, you know, the more often you can. Observe. Remember means observe what's happening in the moment within you. What's happening? Always, um, I think yesterday I was telling you, okay, when you, when we're sitting, we're meditating, and then there is the bell, and then you open your eyes, I was telling you, well, keep some of that energy. You were very much focusing on the inward, you know, and feeling yourself and watching what is happening inside. And I said, don't just hear the bell and go like, oh, okay, it's over. And you open your eyes and all your energy goes out. Whoa. Oh, what's happening around me? And, and oh yeah, what, is, what does it say? What is Shastra saying? Okay, but keep some of the energy in all the time. It's not the, well, the bell doesn't mean the meditation is finished. It's just that phase is over but we maintain presence in our daily life and whatever we do. 
if we just maintain presence in half an hour and we sit every day, even one hour, I'm beautiful, but it's not enough. That is not mindfulness. It is like, it becomes almost an exercise. That quality that we find and we crystallize in the sitting has to be carried in our daily life. So one way to carry that is to maintain some of that attention inward. I always say 50-50, maintain 50% of your attention in and 50% out, you know? So you do things, you will function beautifully in the world, but you never lose your center. What, okay, oh, what am I feeling in this moment, really? Or another way to say it is like, um, you give 50% of your energy to the objective world, which is, let's call it the outer world, and 50% to the subject, to the one who's perceiving and the one that is experiencing everything inside of you. Hmm? There's this space, let's call it space or consciousness or awareness, whatever you wanna call it, presence, that is experiencing everything that is also on the outside world. It's perceived inside, right? Keep half of that energy on that inner space while things are happening. Don't give it all out. That's it. There you find a balance and that's it. that will create an amazing quality in your life of presence in whatever you do. Yes. So, thank you for the sharing, Sabine. <laughs> See what, what sometimes it's great to hear just a few things and then I feel like, oh yeah, I have to say this. Otherwise, I, sometimes I don't know what to say. <laughs> I go like, oh, I said it all. What else can I say? And then it's like, no, 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 no. There is more. But I need, sometimes I need that stimulus. Thank you for that. So um, I move four are with the anchors that I want to present to you. And um, today we're going to practice another anchor. And maybe today at the, the open session, we talk a little more because I would like to hear your actual experiences. Are you actually practicing the remembering the breath and remembering the grounding? Because I keep adding new information now. So if you don't practice the previous one, uh, we can't build on that. Anyway, we move forward now. Sound, listening. Yeah? The listening is a beautiful anchor. So all the five senses can be used um, unlike, unlike many religion, religions and spiritual movement have uh, told you. The actual senses can be used to perceive the outer world. Yeah, that's what they're for, but not only. They're like a doorway that opens into the outer world so I can perceive through the senses. But a doorway is, it can allows you to go both directions, right? I can go from inside the room to outside but I can also turn around and go from the outside to the inside. So they become, they can be, and definitely they are in my, in my uh, practice, they're a double pointed arrow. Yeah, they don't always point out, they also, also point in. It's just a matter of gestalt, we change the gestalt. As I was saying before, you know, you keep 50% of the energy going out, 50 goes in. So listening is a beautiful thing. Why? Because when we put all our attention in the hearing and we start to really listen to sounds, 
the mind tends to become very quiet mm -hmm. simply because the energy, our attention, it's channeled and it's removed from the analytical thinking mind and it's put into the perceiving. Mm -hmm. We could call it the sensorial mind. So we remove the energy from, it's the same energy, right? And there's only one energy. Our attention is one. So suddenly it's absorbed in the sensorial mind and the thinking mind becomes very quiet because we remove the fuel from it. It's very simple because the ears are always open. Yeah, we don't even have to do that to open the ears. Like with the eyes, we have to open them to see, but the ears are always open. So it's like completely uh, receptive and passive sense. So there's nothing to do but bringing our attention there to the sounds. And of course, you can listen to beautiful music. That's very easy. And you might experience this, this space of uh, emptiness and peace inside and presence. Or uh, it's, it, it's very good to start with sounds that are uh, conducive, you know, like sounds of nature are, are wonderful for that, if you have that opportunity, you know. But it's not, it doesn't really matter. And the more you practice, the more you realize that it doesn't really matter what you listen to, but how you listen. Yeah. It's your presence, the presence that you put in the listening itself that creates that state, inner state of uh, presence. So eventually you can do it uh, in the middle of the city or in the marketplace, you know. And, uh, every sound can become a, an opportunity to find that inner space of stillness. So the double, or, the double pointed arrow is right there, right? We listen to the sound inside, but we also notice, wow, there's so, such a stillness inside suddenly. So I become aware of the object, the sound that is perceived, and the subject that is the one who is perceiving. Yeah, that happens in presence. And when you start uh, perceiving that, you start hearing that all sounds have a very particular quality. Suddenly they're like, almost like, they're all like in the perfect place. They're almost like uh, you're listening to the symphony of the present moment it doesn't matter what kind of sounds when you become very silent very still inside every sound becomes like i don't know how to describe it it has a like a, a like a little magical flavor to it to that sound and it's almost like it's it, every sound is in the perfect place you know that you're listening to the symphony of this moment I look at it that way. The uh, mystic and poet Rumi, uh, one time he wrote, when I become quiet inside, I fall into the place where everything is music. So that's what he's describing, exactly that space. Every sound becomes musical. That's one way to describe it. And it might be, you know, the rustling of the wind on the leaves of a tree, the song of a bird, that's easy. But it might also be the hammering of somebody, um, you know, making a something with iron, or uh, it can be a a dog barking in the distance. Mm -hmm. It can be a children, some children laughing down on the street. Every sound becomes musical when we become silent. So you will start perceiving in that way, then you know you're entering that space, which is very good. It's a space of presence, of mindfulness. So we practice that today. 
very simple. We just bring all our attention to sounds. Now, how many of you, and of course I don't see you, so if you raise your hand, I don't see it now. Some of you are invisible. Um, how many of you perceive sounds from the outside where you are? Like even faint sound, like small sounds. Okay, so a few of you are in quite a deep silence. Okay. One thing I need to say is this, very important. Silence can be also listened to. It is as important as, if not more, as listening to sounds. My master told me one day, you have to listen to silence in silence. Hmm? Which to me in that moment was like a koan, like an unresolvable question mark. It's like, what? But it took me years to understand what he meant. So in the same way as we listen to sounds, we can become aware of silence. In the moment we become aware of silence, we become very silent inside. And vice versa, it, we cannot become aware of silence outside if our mind is like bah, 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 very busy, very busy, no? Talking, talking, talking. But in the moment, I, in the middle of the talking, I remember, for example, in the, in the middle of the thinking process, this is a lot of noise inside happening. It's okay, a usual story. And then I remember, I say, oh, wait a second. Wow, there is such a silence here. Let me listen to that. And suddenly I become very quiet, very silent myself too, right? Same like with sounds. Furthermore, silence, it's important to understand, is always there. It's not a... If there are sounds, silence is still there, but it's underneath. It's, it's like the, the, the canvas on which you can see the silence as a white canvas and the sounds are like the colors and the paint over it. So you can hear my voice in this moment. And then when I stop, you notice the silence. But while I'm talking, the silence is still there, it's just underneath, right? I often tell people, imagine I, I, I take you through a door and I, and I ask you, okay, what do you see in this room? And you go like, well, I see, you know, there's a person sitting on a chair and there is a, a table and there is a, some furniture. Say, so, okay. That's all you see? And you go like, yeah, okay. So I take you out, close the door. I remove all the furniture. I ask the person to move out. Then I call you back in and say, what do you see now? And the room is empty, right? And you go like, whoa, it's space. I just see space, there's nothing. I say, okay. But that space, was it there also before, right? It's not that I took the furniture out and I put the space in the room, right? The space was there, but our mind was seeing only the object. So it's the same with listening, you know? So space is for the eyes, what silence is for the ears. Same thing. So silence is always there. It's the container in which all sounds are contained. So becoming aware of that also, it's important when we listen. If there are sounds, we can listen to sounds. If there is silence, we listen to silence. But even when there are sounds, we can become aware also of the silent underneath the sounds because it's always there. So I give you something to work with. Okay, this is it. You have enough information now. I don't want to overload you, plenty. 
So I will um, use some sounds. If you have a speaker, turn it on. I mean, it's obviously on, otherwise you wouldn't hear me. But if you have also, um, some people have like a Bluetooth speaker or something a little bigger than a tiny computer speaker, you can turn that on. And if you don't have it, it's no problem. I will use some sounds on and off during the meditation. For those that have no stimulus, no sounds coming from outside at all. And uh, we will listen to sounds and silence both, yeah? And see how you feel, then see what happens. So find a comfortable position to sit. Um, let me make sure you can hear my sounds first before we start, because it would be really funny if you I think you're listening to them and then, um, okay, tell me if you hear this music now. Can you guys hear this music? Not well, very little. Okay. Mm, we have to adjust your volume or uh, let me see. Can you hear this music? No. Okay, so let me reset this. Something is not happening now. No. Can you hear now? Good, I checked. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll sit there and I'll play sounds for you. I didn't hear anything. And you go like, well, when is he playing these sounds? <laughs> Silence. Okay. Excellent. We're all ready. So when you're ready, just close your eyes and bring the attention inward. Yes, find a comfortable position and just relax into this moment. Feeling the body from inside, what does it feel like? There are some areas that can be relaxed a little more, maybe shoulders and necks. Maybe with a few of our breath, when you breathe out, you can feel like you're letting go of every tension, every thought everything that is not needed in this moment. Maybe you start feeling the weight of the body more on the cushion or on the floor. As you breathe out and let go into the earth a little more. Just relaxing into this moment, into this place. Notice in the weight of the body. Letting go into that sense of weightness. Letting yourself go into the earth a little more. Grounding yourself into this moment.
So we might become aware of the breathing that is happening by itself with its own rhythm. And we bring our attention to sounds, the sound of my voice, maybe some far away softer sounds coming from outside. Or the silence between my words and underneath the sound of my voice at all times. Listening to sounds and listening to silence.
keeping your attention on the silence. and on any sounds that you might perceive. Noticing how you become quiet inside. Noticing how the inner silence starts resonating with the outer silence.
And then slowly, when you are ready, open your eyes. How was that? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Tell me something. Madalena, how was it? Yeah, um, it was not always easy, I have to admit. And um, in my daily life, I feel like every time when I am doing something, and this meditation helps me, when I'm doing something, I'm always thinking like to do the next thing. Every time, it's like, oh, I have to do that. Oh, I the next so i'm never at the present moment mm -hmm. only when i i am uh, like at the moment on my daily life i'm meditating then i'm mm -hmm. thinking like okay stop now mm -hmm. and i have to stop and then yeah it goes but usually it's always the next moment the next moment the next yes. moment yes yes well, you're not alone in this boat. A lot of people have that. It's happening to all of us. Yeah. That's why the, the anchors are good, no? Because they, the mind can be, it has such a momentum, you know, it can be quite overwhelming. Just to create a pause, it, it's not an easy thing sometimes. So anchors are what I'm giving you are beautiful tools that you can use that will help you to create that pause a little more easily, no? Like sounds. Sounds are good because they're like, there is something you can hold on to. It's still an object, no? Silence is a little more difficult listening to silence because it's like, whoa. The mind freaks out. It's like, there's nothing. <laughs> But sounds, aha, uh -huh. you know, it's an easier anchor. Or the breath or the weight of the body, you know, whatever anchors we're going to work with, they're exactly for that reason, to help you to create that pause, you know, for a few moments, just release the thinking mind. Because, uh, yeah, it's really like a muscle that we need to start exercising. We're not used to. You know, we're so used to thinking, thinking, thinking. We're not used to just be and feel this moment. So it's just like we forgot how to do it. So we have to train that muscle again slowly, slowly. It takes time. One little step at a time. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, my daily life now with this meditation, and especially mm -hmm. now this seven weeks meditation that we did now with Mandali, I am more conscious, so I feel that I'm, it's not okay. It's okay, but it's not because I'm not living in the present moment. I feel like you're not conscious every time. People are not conscious right. every day. So we are doing everything without thinking, without feeling, because we have to do that, yes. But uh, now with this meditation, I feel more conscious. So I know, okay. I'm not at the present moment now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I breath. So exactly. and I listen and I stop. I really stop. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the first step. Now on, on the first session, I was telling you the first thing is even becoming aware that we're thinking. That's the first step. 
you know, bringing awareness to that because it, we usually were just completely merged into the thinking process. We don't even notice that. So now there is more awareness, you know, then you realize, oh, I'm thinking, okay, yeah. wonderful. That's, that's the very most important first step. Yeah. Good, great. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. yeah, nice. Somebody else wants to share something? Before we close, yeah, Rafaela. Okay. For me, it was very beautiful. Yeah. And um, by the silence, it was it was really touching me. And by the silence, it was like my brain was making like here a uh -huh. lot of clear. Yeah. Expanding. And, yeah. and my hair, and it was uh, it was great. And um, at the last. Uh, sound uh, block. It also was uh, like I was hearing the silence and didn't know what will come to me because there was a different sound. And right. um, in German, I had to give myself and uh, to, to and it, it was really touching me. In my head. Yes, nice, nice. Yeah, when the mind doesn't know what to expect, you know, yeah. the mind doesn't know what what's coming next. That's beautiful yeah. <laughs> because you create a gap in the mind. You know, the mind has nothing to hold on to to plan. So that's a good space. But the, nice, uh, but the most nice was the silent was wow. expanding. Yeah. Yeah. Silence and space have this beautiful quality that allows you, and as you enter in, it's like expands. And it's a beautiful feeling when we start going from the contraction of the mind to the expansion of the being. It's like, ah, whoa, 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 let me rest here a little bit. This is good. This is good. Exactly. Great. Nice. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that. All right, so maybe we can share a little more later. We're gonna see each other in a couple of hours at 11. In these two hours, you can practice listening. Whatever you do, notice sounds. Just notice them. Listen to them. Even while you're doing something, you know, maybe you're washing the dishes, notice the sound of the water, you know, as it runs out of the tap. The other day I was, uh, after my meditation, I was so quiet and I started preparing my breakfast and I was peeling this apple and suddenly there was so much silence in me that the sound of peeling the apple was like so loud. And so present, you know, and I could hear everything, you know, the knife cutting into the first peel and then zzz, the peeling. And it was like, whoa, <laughs> I was in awe with the sound. I know by the time I finished peeling the apple, I was high like a kite. <laughs> it was an experience peeling that apple, you know, but that's what happens when you're quiet. Suddenly you start hearing so much more, you know, when you're quiet inside because there is a silent backdrop and then every sound becomes more amplified, you know, more beautiful, more amazing. <laughs> so you tell me more later how it went. Okay. I'll see you in a couple of hours. Namaste everybody.